Podcast. My name is Jasper, and I'm with Zach Wallace. And today we will be recapping the Renegade Open Major that happened last November 2021. Um, we're just going to be going through our games round by round, how we felt after, and go from there. So first we'll go with our uh, lists that we brought. So I brought the Green Knights, a uh, very fluffy list. Uh, no, it was the five Dread Knight lists that you've been seeing around. Um, I brought a detachment of the Prescient Brotherhood. In this, I had a Brotherhood champion and a Grandmaster in Nemesis Dread Knight armor. Had the Great Hammer and Sigil of Exit, exit and the um, three up and vulnerable save. And then it had a unit of ten strikes... 20 interceptors, both units of 10. Then I had a detachment of sword bearers. In that, I had Castellan Crow, the thug. Then I had uh, Grandmaster and Nemesis Dread Knight. That one was just with a sword. Then I had a strike squad. And then three Dread Knights, all the same, with the great sword and the teleporter. And all my little manlets had the Hellbirds, so got that strength 6, AP 2, 2 damage. So I started with 8 CP, and then... Uh, Let's hear what Zach had. Yeah, some hot Dread Knight on Dread Knight action. Oh, it was it was sexy. <laughs> I like it if it works. Um, so I brought uh, Leviathan Tyranids, uh, pure Leviathan after the release of the supplement. Uh, my HQs, I had a Flyrant. Uh, you did, did you go over psychic powers and stuff yet? No, nah, I just said half the psychics. Perfect. Yeah, we got a Flyrant, Swarm Lord, of course. If your Tyranid list doesn't start with Swarmy, usually you're doing something wrong. You done fucked up. Uh, Tyranid Prime let me do in redeploys in the Chapter Master rerolls. Uh, two units, 16 Gene Stealers, six Scything Talons in each, uh, 14 Hormigants, 30 Devil Gants, uh, Devourer Termagants, for those unfamiliar with the term. Noobs. Uh, <laughs> ten Flesh Borgants, just action monkeys. Unit of five warriors with uh, Lash Whip Bone Sword. Uh, they had the plus one to hit Synaptic Link upgrade. Um, unit of six Hive Guard, of course. Uh, two Lictors, the Malice Scepter with the reroll damage. And that was pretty much the list. That was the list, nice and sexy. I also had the uh, redeploy upgrade mm -hmm. in my list because Papa loves redeploys. Mm -hmm. It's such a strong ability. It's so good. I mean, if you guys have access to redeploys, take the redeploys. Especially after you know who's going first. Yes. You have that knowledge. You can Huge, huge. Oh, I'm going second. Oh, let me just hide. Mm -hmm. Going first. Bop, bop, on the front line. Let's go. I like to take, like, two key units, throw one right up in, on the front line and mm -hmm. one way back into safety, and then I only have to spend one redeploy on those. If I get first turn, I can throw them both right up on the edge or pull back and very smart. a little cage gear. Yeah, very smart. A lot of flexibility there. Yeah, so uh, we're just going to be going around th round by round, kind of what we played, who we played, what mission we played. We're going to try and recap the secondaries the best we can. Keep in mind, it's January of 2022. <laughs> this happened in November of 2021, so might be a little fuzzy, but we should do all right. We should do all right. We'll be close enough. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, heading close. into this event, how did you expect to do, Zach? Um, I, I thought I was going to do pretty well. Uh, so this event, at the last minute, they changed it to Player Place Terrain, mm -hmm. which we had not been practicing. It was, it was fairly new to us for this. Um, yep. It, uh, so I, I could have used a little more practice on that. but Yes, yeah. I We'd literally never used Player Place before. Yeah. Uh, we're still kind of <laughs> relatively new to like competitive and whatnot. And so we had never used player place before, um, so it was new to us. So we we had a couple games of practice, but man, it would have been nice to have a little bit, <laughs> a little, little, little bit more. Up. But yeah. Um, yeah, myself, I my goal was three and three, mm -hmm. but I was kind of really shooting for four and two. Three and three was my like coping safe, <laughs> like right. oh, at least I got that. Because it was like if I did two and four with this Grey Knight list, I would have had to reevaluate my life. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I uh, I was hoping for three and three. I got three and three. It was, yeah, it was my, I was happy. I, I broke even. <laughs> yeah, very uh, very good event. You played some good opponents, which we'll recap oh, yeah. here. Um, I ended up doing four and two, so I was pretty happy with that. 
Nicely done. Yes. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So, uh, round one, we played the retrieval mission. It's uh, mission number 11. It's the first mission in the Grand Tournament Packet 2021. Um, it is Hammer and Anvil style deployment. There are six objectives. Um, so, in this mission, I played Logan with his T Sons. Now, Logan brought a Cult of Time um, Thousand Sons list, which was kind of nice playing Thousand Sons round one because I have one of our friends plays Thousand Sons and I was playing it leading into this event. So I had a lot of good practice going into Thousand Sons. So when I saw that, I was I was feeling pretty comfortable into it. Mm -hmm. Felt pretty good. Um, I'll go over his list really quick. So it was, it was Cult of Time, had Aramon, the Exalted Sorcerer, um, 10 rubrics, 10 rubrics, 10 rubrics, 10 rubrics, um, a unit of 10 Scarab Occult Terminators, and then two five-unit squads of Spawn with a Rhino. Mm -hmm. um, so I saw this, and it was different from our friends. Our friend normally runs um, Cult of Duplicity, so mm -hmm. he has the redeploys. Um, Cult of Time, for those that don't know, is more just like focused on big bricks and reviving these big bricks mm -hmm. with psychic powers. So when I saw that... With my Grey Knight list, I felt pretty confident going into the matchup. I saw it, and I was like, okay, okay, this is kind of my game to lose based on secondaries and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we ended up doing secondaries. I ended up taking Stranglehold, Purify Ritual, the Grey Knight's uh, specific secondary, um, and No Prisoners. And for those that don't know, the Purify, ri the Purify Ritual is mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> it is so good. It's basically an auto 15. Pretty much almost never don't get that. Uh, my opponent, Logan, he ended up taking Stranglehold as well. Uh, he took Mutate Landscape, which is a um, Thousand Sun specific. It's basically kind of like uh, the Death Guard spread the sickness. It's But Psychic. But Psychic, <laughs> yes. Um, so he does it, and a little bit better. Yeah, so he, yeah <laughs> a little, like a little he, bit better. You can be on that, and he can still do it. So basically, he goes on an objective. He does a Psychic Power. If he gets it, it's three points. It doesn't matter if you're on the objective or not. He just If he does it, he gets the power off. He gets three points. Um, and then he took banners. So when I saw the secondary cho uh, choices by him, I was pretty happy. I saw banners and I was like, okay, if I can remove banners off of here, it's going to be hard for him to replace the banners, especially with these huge squads that he has. Like, he doesn't have a lot of, like, chaff to really be around the board. Uh, Mutate, I was kind of so-so about. I was like, well, if he's smart, he's going to be using the, uh, the auto-pass cabal thing that they have. Um, and then he had mute, uh, stranglehold as well. So just going into this game, I ended up going first. So I redeployed on the, um, the left side of the board. So, um, redeployed like three dread knights down there and then ended up scooting one up and basically trying to shoot him off of the, one of them, the objectives and man, actually Rubikai with 10, um, with 10 models, it's actually pretty tough to kill with all the strats they have. So mm -hmm. I ended up shooting like four Dread Knights into 10 Rubikai and only ended up getting like six. Ended up failing the 9-inch charge, but uh, I was pretty happy with the board placement because um, he wasn't yet on the one objective, so I was happy about that, so I got my Strangle. And I kind of moved up on the other side of the board with some Manlets, and um, I kind of wanted him to redeploy as soon as he could because he had the, the once-per-game... Um, Veil of Darkness, um, Dark Matter Crystal. So I was like, I kind of hope he takes the bait, redeploys, takes out this dre one Dread Knight that's more forward. That'd be fine. He ended up doing that, and once that was burned, I no longer had a screen, and it was just kind of easy to keep feeding him my little MSU units, move blocking him while uh, taking the objectives. I really... What I did is I did my Grey Knight thing, where I started on one side of the board and redeployed all my Dread Knights to the top half of the board. He had no mobility, so I was able to really take the top half of the board while move blocking him on the bottom, and that was kind of the game. I ended up uh, winning that one 94 to 66. Uh, how did your round one go? Um, my round one went pretty well. It was, it was a close game. Um, I, it was into uh, Death Guard. Uh, which I had just been practicing with uh, versus someone in our group. Uh, so I had I had gotten a fair amount of reps in before this game, and I think that really helped push me 
over the edge on this one. Uh, my opponent didn't um, have a super great understanding of what new Leviathan Tyranids did. And that definitely gave me a bit of an edge. Uh, I took, for secondaries, almost every game I took Rod and Engage. Uh, my army's built for it with Lictors and Gene Stealers. I'm pretty much moving across the board, turn one. Built for that big rod. <laughs> built for the big rod. And then, yeah, rod and engage pretty much work together. Uh, if I'm getting rod in all quarters, I'm, I'm pretty much engaging on all fronts. Uh, and then I took Bring It Down. He had a, a couple dreads in there. Uh, I think he had two contemptors and a Leviathan, Leviathan. dread, and then like two Some, or three Plague Burst Crawlers. Yeah. So Bring It Down was a pretty safe bet. I knew I'd be killing big things no matter what. Mm -hmm. I may as well be getting points for it. Uh, other than that, he was running Poxwalkers and Terminators, which didn't really give up a whole lot of points. And yeah, no. Being an 8th ed book, I basically can build for about two secondaries, and yep. then I kind of hope the mission or my opponent gives me one. Yep, hope and pray, baby. <laughs> hope and pray, Old waiting book. for that sweet ninth ed treatment. Oh, uh, you hope you get a good secondary. <sighs> We're, I, I really hope so. Yeah, you, you need it, you need it, especially with uh, the new Nuckman data. Give me something like collect biomass. Um... But my uh, my opponent took no prisoners, spread the sickness, and then it was either something like bring it down or uh, abhor the witch or something where he's getting points for killing my big monsters, but I really didn't give him that many. It wasn't Smart. wasn't a great pick, but he didn't have a whole lot of things that he was built for. Uh, it's an interesting game. We kind of sat on like our halves of the board and mm -hmm. just kept killing stuff and fighting for those. To sit on those uh, middle four objectives. Yeah. Um, kind of on your can, board half. Yeah. And with player place terrain, I could pretty much stay on all three of my, like, mm -hmm. my half of the board without exposing myself. Ah, you love the player. This is where mm -hmm. you fell in love with player place terrain. Really. And the fact that gene stealers can move through ruins. Yes. <laughs> so I could yes. basically hide everything on my side and then just run through all the terrain when I was yes. charging him. Uh, which, yeah, turn, I, I got turn one, uh, right away, moved a blob of gene stealers across the board, popped a plague burst crawler, Oof. tied up the Leviathan dread Whoa. and a contemptor. So it, it took away a lot of his shooting, like half, over half of his shooting was tied up or taken yep. out that turn one, uh, which he ended up just shooting into the blob and everything and pretty much killed the gene stealers on his turn. Yeah. But for a whole turn, most of what he was hitting was the gene stealers. The mm -hmm. rest of my army was in cover or much less of a threat in his mind. Yes. Um, he played it really well, though. It was, it was close. It uh, came down to 75 to 73. Ooh, it was close just, just game. a two-point game. That's a nail-biter. That was a nail-biter, yeah. Real, you think that kind of came down to your experience in the Death Guard versus his inexperience oh, yeah. in the Leviathan? Yeah, I, I think just, just having a little bit more practice into Death Guard than he had into my list, I, I was able to surprise him with some, some tricks. Yep. Um, that he wasn't necessarily expecting, and I pretty much knew the Death Guard trick. Yeah, like, or lack said. thereof. Yeah, or lack thereof, yeah. <laughs> Be yeah. resilient and move on up. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, once I had kind of taken his shooting out of consideration, like, Tyranids are so fast into Death Guard mm -hmm. that I, I just get to control all the engagements. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough yep. when I'm picking and choosing everything that's happening. Yeah, you, you get to decide what dies, mm -hmm. ultimately. Yeah. I mean... Nice. How'd you feel after that? First win? It felt good. I, I just give up a lot of points on no prisoner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you that, give that the, helps. You, yeah. yeah, I give up a secondary, but... But, but yeah, I felt good in that game. I, I felt like it was mine to lose, having had more experience into his, yeah. his list. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. He was a very good opponent. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. My, likewise. Uh, Logan was great to play. I've played him before in the uh, spring tournament of last year, so mm -hmm. it was nice to see a familiar face and someone oh, i knew yeah. we were gonna have a good game yeah this so. was my first game into jason rogers and his death guard yeah um yeah very good player that was, was a lot of fun hell yeah well uh let's go into round two now this was priority targets so mm -hmm. everyone's favorite mission or <laughs> least favorite depending on mm -hmm. uh sometimes some people say it's boring but uh, anytime i get a free 15 secondaries i'm not gonna complain i'm not i am not complaining <laughs> even being a nice new book with nice mm -hmm. fresh secondaries not gonna complain Everybody likes an auto 15 right, right now. Just an auto 15 feels good. <laughs> it takes some stress away. Or it's like, I only really got to choose two secondaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah. So, I ended up playing Kyle Thompson. 
who also had Grey Knights. The Grey Knight Mirror. Ooh, yes. Nice. That's fun. Uh, I was very actually scared. I was like, well, I, I know mirrors a lot of time can come down to who has more experience with the army. So I was like, mm-hmm. ah, fuck. Because <laughs> I, you know, I had only played like, like, I think three games with the Grey Knights before the event. And uh, so I was not super confident in how to play the mirror. Bad, though. <laughs> not bad, not bad. Um, but uh, so Kyle had a very similar Grey Knight list to mine. Basically, the only differences were he had four Dread Knights instead of five. But he had two Dreadnoughts with the Lads Cannons. Hmm. Yeah, so he was taking advantage of the free reroll to hit. And he was. He told me, he's like, yeah, I expected Grey Knights. And I wanted the uh, the D6 damage from the shooting. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, fair enough. Um so that game, the secondaries went, I took Stranglehold, Priority, and Purify. And I was very iffy about Purify into Grey Knights because I've heard from other podcasts that uh, Purify into the, the Mirror is no good because everything just gets denied. And uh, oh, yeah. yes, it does. I can confirm everything gets denied. First turn, I got four points on it. The rest of the game, I got eight. or another four because yeah. then he was in <laughs> deny range. Um uh. Kyle ended up taking Engage instead of Stranglehold, Priority, and Purify as well. So we ended up having... The only difference was he took Engage and I took Stranglehold. Now, on this mission, I was very surprised he took Engage because that meant he had to come pretty aggressively towards me, and it was like, okay, you know, like, aggressively towards me but not being on the objectives. Because I I usually like Stranglehold unless you really can outmission me, you know? Mm kind of feels... I just like Stranglehold. It's so good. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, in this mission, you know, we all, cat and mouse, we both hid very hard. Um, I ended up going first, and I made a huge mistake, Zach. <laughs> what did I do? I ended up taking, getting my stranglehold with different guys. Easy, no problem. But I put two Dread Knights right in the center. There was no line of sight blocking. I went, let's see if these two Dread Knights can take all this shooting. I bet you I can. Narrator, he could not. <laughs> so I, lo- I was down... He got one Dread Knight down to three wounds and blasted the other one down. First turn. Yeah. His first turn. So I was like, oh, that's probably going to lose me the game. Because that really, like, neuters my shooting. Mm -hmm. But it's fine. It's fine. Um, Actually, from there, I basically just went, okay, it's mission playing mode. So I basically just tried to really play into the stranglehold. Hopefully, you know, match him 10 for 10 on primaries. Mm -hmm. Try and not let him get that 15. And, um keep my strangleholds high which i ended up doing and got 15 on priority obviously and then we both matched on purify um but the difference really was i had one turn when i did super well in the primary i was able to sh- jump or fly over with the jetpack unit and steal an objective and then um and shoot him off instead of the second turn instead of um um Focusing on the Dread Knights that all came to kill mine, I went, I'm going to ignore them, and I'm going to shoot everything you have on this objective, on his non-home base objective, which ended up giving him a 5 on primary, and that was one of the biggest difference makers in this game. Nice. Um, yeah, felt pretty good, and then his engage really cost him, unfortunately, so ended up winning that game 88-75. to 75. Felt pretty good. Nice. Hell yeah, yeah, felt pretty good. Going to the mirror, I was like, okay, I, I have, feel pretty good now. That's awesome. Hell yeah. How did you feel? It was nice to win the mirror match. Right? <laughs> What did you go into round two, Zach? Oh, I went into uh, Dave Danister's Dark Angels. Oh, our boy Dave. He... I love me some Dave. <laughs> Dave's a great local guy. Yeah. He's actually the first per- person I've ever played against at any tournament. Yeah, he's probably like the second person for yeah, me. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Got my ass beat by your hands, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he he brought his uh, his Deathwing Dark Angels, uh, or no Ravenwing. Ravenwing, Ravenwing is yeah, the bikes. Ravenwing, yeah, he brought yeah. Ravenwing. Yes, yes, he did. A lot of the old like sidecar bikes and yeah. stuff. Yeah, some a cool attack list. bikes. Yeah, it was a cool pl- list. Did he bring a plane? He had two planes. Two planes. Dose planes. Dose planes. Oh, sadly, I had a pretty good counter to his list. <laughs> yeah. Um, he he made the move of trying to get to the Hive Guard turn one. Uh, oh, uh, I took. Starting off with my typical rod and engage, I yep. also took priority for the auto fifteen. The, nice, the comfortable nice. So you're like, auto I got my two secondaries I built in, and I got that nice sweet fifteen. The mission one, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm, this is going to be a decent scoring game right off the bat. Uh, he was taking death on the wind, so he's trying to kill stuff with uh, Raven. with Ravenwing. Yep. Uh, engage and then priority, of course. Yep. Um, Figures. He uh, he ended up rolling first turn. 
Uh, but I was able to, with my redeploys, mm. I was able to uh, redeploy my Gaunt units to basically zone out my entire deployment zone. So he physically couldn't move the planes far enough to target the Hive Guard turn one. Mm. So he ended up just shooting like Warriors and Gaunts and some Gene Stealers. Mm. And it, uh, it really opened it up to where both of his planes were right on the line then. Yep. And right in my kill zone. <laughs> right so in my kill zone. I jumped past him with the gene stealers to kind of hit what was behind the planes. And I, I pretty handily took out both of the planes turn yeah. one. Yep. Um, and then started started eating into his list a little bit. Um, it was it was kind of brutal. He I, I was making six up feel no pains. <laughs> better than I think I've made in any game I've played before oh. or since. Just straight sixes. <laughs> By turn four, after, like, focusing down my flyrant, the flyrant was still... Because it was minus one to hit because I kept it in dents. Yep. It was also minus one to wound from the relic. So it was minus one to hit and wound, and it is four up invuln, six up feel no pain. And I was rolling sixes like crazy. Just couldn't stop. By turn... Battle round four, I think it was down to two wounds, and Dave just decided, you know what, I'm done going for this flyrant, I'm just going to kill the other stuff. <laughs> like... <laughs> So the flyrant made it to the end of the game. The flyrant, which the flyrant made it. Always fun. That was that was one of my first like big Tyranid models I painted. It's come with yeah. me on almost every Tyranid uh, game. The wings look beautiful. Oh, it's 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 so much fun. It's it's fun playing with dragons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, but, cockroach dragons. Yeah, and after after taking out the planes, uh, he didn't have a lot of like heavy hitters to really get at me. Uh, the Devourer Gaunts were just chewing through stuff like crazy. The, uh, the Obsec, I mean, I gave the Gene Stealers double Obsec Ooh, with the strat, the new yeah. Leviathan strat. Yes. They were able to run across the board and, uh, wipe a unit, and then I used the strat, uh, overrun yes. to move them again, uh. and I was able to tow in to his priority objective. Uh. So not only did I deny him primary on his next turn, but I denied him priority objective. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that one was oh, a little rough. Oh no! Um, from there, yeah, it was just uh, my army was just picking stuff up, and it was hard for him to claw back. Um, it was is really zoning out and yep. being able to use the hive guard for the whole game is oh, really what adds. If up. you take five turns of hive guard with the double shooting, mm -hmm. you're done. You've lost the game, even unfortunately. If, even if the rest of my stuff has been, like, declawed and yep. neutered a little bit. Like, yep. if Hiveguard are shooting for five turns of the game, it hurts. You've probably lost. Yeah. So, well, I, I, you feel pretty big brain with those uh, screening out turn one? Yeah, I uh, I had thought of that move in preparation for Orcs, and ah. I was happy I got to use it in a little practice game. Yeah, big brain, big brain <laughs> moves. Felt good. All right, so after this, 2-0. Heading into your final match, how'd you feel? Yeah, you pretty feel? good, pretty good. I was like, you know what, we're we're two and zero. Even if I yeah. lose this last one, I finish on a positive for the day. Right? You're like, I just gotta win one more <laughs> to get my goal. Right? I got four games left. Let's fucking go. Yeah, and it made it kind of a little more loose, a little loosey goosey. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> like, like, okay, okay cool. I've got two wins. I can just kind of. I got four rounds just to hit my my like realistic goal. And yeah. <laughs> then I can see if I get my four and two stretch goal. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, so heading into the last round of the day, we uh, we played Vital Intelligence. Mm -hmm. So this was a hold two, hold three, which is some people love it, some people hate it. I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of interesting because both uh, both days, the final round of the day was a hold two, hold three. We yes. finished on a on a tough one. <laughs> yep, it was like. The TO wanted to make you work for this one. Yep. No more, no like end of the day easy round. Yeah, it's no a whole sweep two, and clear three. on that last mission. No priority on the last mission. No, mm -hmm. you're earning this win. You're <laughs> right. earning the last tough win. Mm -hmm. So uh, my my round three on Vital Intelligence, I played Mike. Mike was playing Admech, the uh, Lucius build. Mm -hmm. Now this is post nerf. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, whew. So basically, you know, I had its Rust Stalkers, the Infiltrators, so, you know, uh, Cerberus Raiders. Mm -hmm. So he had his pregame move, his forward deploy. He had two or three big blocks of Rangers or of Vanguard, whatever one's better. It was so scary. And then the characters that buff everything. Then he also had like six Last Chickens, Zach. Six of them. Six <laughs> Last Chickens. I was told Last Chickens were poop, but this man brought <laughs> six. That made my bubble crunch a little bit. Um, th those boys were Mars too, so he had the he did have the rerolls. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, so I was a little scared of those. Um, hmm. 
So I ended up taking for secondary a stranglehold, no prisoners, just trying to kill what I could. You know, figured I'd get some points, and then purify ritual because, oh baby. Uh, Mike t- took engage rod, so he went the Zach move, and then he <laughs> took a boar. Obviously, you know, trying to get the kill you, I get points. Yeah, yeah. it's good into gray knights, <laughs> right? So I, you know, I kind of looked at this mission. And I was like, we'll see how it goes. I kind of want second turn, hoping for second turn, because I kind of I first of all I love second turn because I feel like in most matchups it that the last turn of 15 on primary if you mm-hmm. if you're in the game you're going to get 15 that's so powerful mm-hmm. i'm personally kind of a fan of a uh, reactive play style i like yes. picking apart opponents mistakes kind yes. of thing yep so i like it when they go first and then i can find a weak spot yeah like i feel like my personally i feel like i can be kind of aggressive but mainly i like to be defensive mm-hmm. so getting that second turn is awesome <laughs> love it um and i did just that went second with the player place terrain, I was able to hide pretty much everything. Um, you know, Blaz chickens can move freaking far. So he was going to be able to shoot something in his first turn. But uh, basically what he did is he moved his Rust Stalkers up on an objective, moved the Cerberus Raiders up on an objective, which if you don't know Cerberus Raiders, they have a strat. So he goes on the objective enough so I can't move on it. And then what he does is if I go up to charge that those Cerberus Raiders... He falls back and moves moves away. So I can't move on it in my movement phase, and I can't charge him because I'll just run away like a little bitch. <laughs> no. Obviously, great great strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, but his first turn, he doesn't really do much. You know, Rough Stalkers aren't in combat with anything. Last Chickens bounce on the Dread Knight's 4-up. <laughs> he rolled yeah. kind of poorly, and I rolled my 4-ups, and I kind of went... I was like, oh, Last Chickens blow, dude. I was like, I got this. Those things aren't going to do anything to Dread Knights. No problem. Um, and service Raiders took some pot shots, didn't really do much. So my my turn, I, I gave him a little bit of Great Knight goodness. Mm. So I gave those uh, service Raiders some hellacious psychic smites and just obliterated them in the psychic phase. So I was able to use a Great Knight's uh, psychic power to then move in the psychic phase onto that objective those Raiders were on. So then it's like, oh, well, you blocked me in the movement phase, but Papa's got psychic phase movement. So I got got on there. I obliterated uh, the Rust Stalkers as well on that objective. So I was able to steal that as well. Get get my um, purifies, and on his turn, his clap back. He's like, "Okay, okay. Uh, you obliterated all my service raiders. You obliterated my Rust Stalkers." So he did something I don't did, don't necessarily agree with, but he took the Rust Stalkers and put them into reserves. Mm-hmm. Which I was pretty happy with because I was like, oh, one less thing for me to deal with. I'm pretty, personally, I'm pretty good at screening. So I was able to, I was like, oh, well, he's not going to go anywhere he wants to go now. Um, last, more last chickens moved up and I got a taste of pain, Zach. <laughs> the first turn I got cocky and I just threw caution in the wind. Uh, last chickens came back and they killed two, like for sure one dread knight, maybe even two that turn. Oh, wow. And I was like, okay, so they're <laughs> not bad at shooting. I just had a lucky turn. So made that a mental note, like, okay, we got to hide from one unit, kill the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I did. Did that. It was a very grindy game, like very back and forth, kind of tough to see who's going to win, who's going to lose. He ended up, like, teleporting one the, one big blop in, like, a corner on an objective. The, the big unit of, like, Vanguard or Rangers where they have transhuman, plus one save, and I went, I'm not going to even bother. Not even going to bother shooting that. Waste of time. And basically just by focusing down, like, the top half of the board and shooting Rust Stalkers and just picking picking targets and not overexposing myself after the uh, chicken mistake, I was able to just whittle him down and eventually screen out his rod stuff, like his Taraxi. Um, like I said, I had my screens. I was like, I'm not letting you rod. You know, screening out a lictor is hard to rod. Mm-hmm. Very hard. But uh, being a 10 Taraxi, not as hard. Mm-hmm. So I was able to do that, and that kind of ended up winning me the game. Nice. Yeah. So uh, ended up winning that one 81 to 71. And how about you, Zach? What did you go round three? Oh, round three, vital intelligence. So I went into uh, Tim Doran. Uh, and his salamanders. And his uh, frozen north. Yeah, this Bastard is my man. Game into someone from frozen north. Uh, ah, cool local group. Currently, yeah. I think they're top three. Uh, for sure, top from, three. For they, sure, top three. They, they fight for be. number two. All yeah. Like, the, them and Battle Brothers are 
always Quite just good. back and forth. Yeah, yeah this Frozen was a, great. a really fun game. Uh, he brought his salamanders. Um, oh man, yeah, this this was one of my favorite games of the uh, the tournament. Uh, so he had what is like three Leviathan dreads, uh, redemptors, or yeah, redemptors, um, some contemptors. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of dreads, land speeders, uh, land speeders. Yeah, there's there's a decent amount of meltas in his list. It was pretty scary. Eradicators. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, I took. I started with the the classic Zach Rod and Engage. Classic. Um, and then I took Bring It Down. He had a whole bunch of uh, vehicles and dreads. Yeah. That I really had to deal with anyway. And I yep. figured I'm gonna get points for this. Um, Makes sense. He took uh, Rod, I believe he took Engage, uh, and then also to the last, which was two of the Redemptors and the Eradicators. Okay. Um, which I thought for sure I was going to get. The Eradicators, he actually kept hidden, and I believe he combat squatted them. Yeah, broke so, apart. So, yeah, even if I took out a few of them, I, uh, I didn't get the, the full five from yeah, that unit. you get two um, at least. Yeah, so he kind of kept one unit held back for most of the game. Uh, I got turn one. He had deployed most of his army in that top corner. Yeah. Um, I charged everything with uh, Gene Stealers. I popped a Dreadnought, took some wounds off some other stuff, and then uh, tied up a couple more Dreadnoughts uh, in his turn, which he definitely used to wipe those Gene Stealers Ooh, real quick. Yeah. But, Mass bolters. Again, forced to shoot the gene stealers. It, it kept yeah. him from shooting the rest of my list. Yep. Um, used a lot of shenanigans. Uh, tried to fight my way out of my corner, but really, I I ran out of steam after about turn three. There's just so much shooting coming from the dreadnoughts that were just yeah. picking up all my little griblies. No. It uh, it was pretty rough. Um. I, I hung on until about turn three. Uh, we both thought I was still going to win it. Mm. And then turns four and five, I just didn't have enough on the board at that point. Yeah. And he started clawing back, and he, he got me by 20 points in those Ran last two turns. And he got, yeah, like five points on turn four, and then turn uh, five, he got like 15. Oof. Um, yeah, really pulled it out at the end there. Really, yeah. He managed by bottom of four, he was... Uh, he had tied up the hive guard as well, oh, so I hate to see that. By then, the gene stealers are gone. The devil gaunts are in a corner doing their thing, yeah. and then the hive guard get tied up. And it's starting to run out of teeth. <laughs> yeah, but uh, how, how, what do you think he could have did different in that one? It was it was it was good. Um, really, just used up a lot of my resources really fast. I yeah. should have played a little cagier. Um, Thought I was going to do a little bit more damage right away that would justify spending my units in such a way. Yeah. But one thing I am proud of, um, and then Tim even said he, he'd he never seen anyone do anything like that. He he was even excited like that he got to like witness it. He he thought it was a big, big okay, brain move. So okay. someone from Frozen North thought I, I pulled a cool strategy okay, here. Okay. But he had lined it up. So, uh, maybe it was Stranglehold he took. I, I can't remember his third secondary, but he had it lined up, so he brought some Marines in from the board edge, from yep. Strategic Reserves, and he was, uh, he had an easy charge. I had my Flyrant and my Maliceptor on an objective. He had an easy charge once he killed the, uh, the Flyrant to get in with the Maliceptor and steal the objective from me. Um... Uh, so what ended up happening is the Maliceptor was down to one wound. He stopped shooting it and started trying to kill the Flyrant. He killed the Flyrant, and I used the 1CP strat to mm. auto-explode my own Flyrant to yes. suicide bomb my own Maliceptor on one wound oh. in order to keep him from charging so I he couldn't that. score primary. And also, this this is a sticky objective, so you still have that. Yep, so it's still under my control. Yes. He doesn't get to flip it, and I'm still getting primaries oh. for it. It kept him from holding more that turn, That's too. That's huge. It was big. Granted, I had to suicide my own Maliceptor, but Which it was hurts. on one wound. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't going to do anything. He was going to kill it in combat anyway. You did the Tyranid thing for, right? for the hive mind. Sacrificed a little bit of my own bat biomass yes. for the benefit of the hive. Yes. The hive mind does not care about the individual. <laughs> not no. in one bit. No. That maliceptor can be... Re that biomass can be repurposed. Yes. Once we conquer this world... Once... Well... 
Not this world. Well, not <laughs> this world. Not th- it, it did come out to uh, 49 to 69 on that last one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember watching that game. That was a close game. That it was went right up to time. Yeah. Very close. We both thought I was going to win that one oh. until the bottom of four. It was like, oh, man, you're oh, going to be able to just claw it back. Do you think if you put your hive guard, like, sure, you might not have been able to shoot anything mm-hmm. turn one, but knowing now that his plan kind of revolves around moving forward, put them in the, mm-hmm. just the back corner? Yeah. I, I deployed my hive guard a little too offensively. Yeah. And I... Uh, I did not set up the terrain. As soon as the the mission started, I realized I had oriented my terrain kind of facing more hammer and anvil. Uh, so it made it easy. Once he got around to my like corner, half of the board, yeah. it made it harder to hide anything. Oh no! Yeah. So then he could start opening up on hive guard and stuff, yeah. and it, it wasn't uh, was not set up in my favor. <laughs> yeah, that's where some mm-hmm. of the player place and experience comes in. Uh, yeah, terrain formats are huge, so. If you're able to practice what you know you're playing into, it can make a big difference. And since then, I will say I am a full convert oh, to player place. 100%. With a little bit of practice, Let, it, it guarantees you're not getting picked up no, off the board turn yeah, one. It removes... Because 9th edition is so lethal, Zach. It's so it's lethal. It's, it's crazy. It, I it, I mean, you're seeing hammerheads now that obliterate freaking Magnus. You see <laughs> fucking... I mean, I mean, so much shooting. After Crusher Stampede comes out, like... There's like a 90% chance with like two or three CP that a Demachiron can just pick up Magnus. Yep, just I like I don't even worry about it. I pick up Magnus, and if I roll a little hot, I pick up Mortarion. Oh, and that's just it's that's just combat. I mean, there's so much shooting too in the game. Mm -hmm. So another thing with this player place is everything is obscuring. Yeah, every piece of terrain, every forest, every barricade obscuring, which is awesome. Is kind of nice. Yeah, it, it keeps it from being planet bowling. Ball. Yes, and you know, granites are kind of a shooting army, hmm. and I liked it because it just you know no one likes playing a game where you just automatically pick up your opponent's yeah shit turn one. I mean, I like it if I'm that player, <laughs> but if I'm getting picked up, yeah, it's not. Fun. And even then, it's it's not really fun doing that because it's like, okay, this didn't take any skill. This. This was just complete and utter army. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I've, I played a couple 8th ed games where it was yeah. like three pieces of terrain on the board back Oof. when I was playing Harlequins. It was Big like, board. well, this is a loss. You're like, well, you want to get a beer? Because <laughs> right. we know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but. day four, Zach. Yeah. Or day, day two, <laughs> round four. Not day four. That would be a hell of a fucking ride. So and going into day, day, uh, day two, you're two and one. I'm three and mm-hmm. zero. Oh. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty saucy. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm basically I'm like I could lose every game and be decent. You know I hit mm-hmm. my three and three go- real goal. I, I you know if I get one win out of this day, I'm pretty pretty happy. Right. Yeah. I, started the first day with no losses. Yeah. I felt pretty good. Felt like a you know big cheese on campus <laughs> uh how did you feel going into day two pretty good i i had one two i figured you know if i i want to get three and three all i got to do is win one game today yep we'll see if i can win another two i could go four and two yeah right and, you know i think even with like good lists it's good just to have that like realistic goal where it's like mm-hmm. especially in the twin cities man we got some good players here very good players insane we got James Kelling, Ben Sherwin, Matt Root. Charlie got, Andre. Yeah, Charlie Matt Root, Andre, Matt Root yeah. comes up from, like, Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Tyler DeVries, I don't want to say his name. He's, like, very good. Scott Bleegan. Uh, other people from Wisconsin, like Oliver mm-hmm. Smith and... Um, just tons of guys. I can't even name oh, yeah. everybody. Midwest is pretty... Uh, Midwest fucks. We got some big fish. Yeah, we got some <laughs> like, fucking big... Oh, you, yeah. You're going to go to RTT in, in the Twin Cities, and you might be playing two of the top ten ITC-ranked players. Yeah, like, I remember I, crazy. I brought my Tyranids back uh, before Grey Knight, like, when their old their 8th ed book was out, and people, like... Or shitting didn't on th- them. Yeah, didn't think they were that great. And my Tyranids just got straight up destroyed by Grey Knight's. I didn't find out until after the RTT was over that that was Ben Sherwin. Yeah. And I was like, okay, now I feel a little bit better. I was being autistic and just on BCP, and I'm like, Zach, you just played Ben Sherwin. You're playing Ben Sherwin. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was like, okay. Oh, yeah, I got beat like, by Ben Sherwin's like, great Okay, nights. that feels not okay. as bad. That's a little bit better. <laughs> feels not as bad. I think, yeah, he was like top six or something. Yeah, he's something in the ITC. He's at that top point. 10 for sure. Yeah, still. He's definitely at this top point. 10. But yeah, he. Yeah, so he's even even then, he was probably even a little higher. It was rough. Yeah. He came to that RTT just looking to brush up yeah. on some practice. Just, look, <laughs> just looking to fucking take ass and chew yeah. gum. 
But, uh, yeah, so day, day two, round four. Uh, this mission is Surround and Destroy. So it's a six-objective mission, Dawn of War-style deployment. Uh, you got two in your deployment, two in your opponent's deployment, and then two in the midboard. So kind of a balanced mission. I like this mission, actually, quite a bit. Um, Papa, Papa Jasper played uh, Connor. Connor is from Frozen North. Frozen North, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, Connor was playing Deathwing. Very cool Dark Angel list. It had, like, 40 Terminators. It's just like, hey, this is what's good. This is what I'm bringing. Like, I'm just bringing max Terminators. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> fuck you, you're not killing anything. So, knowing that, my secondaries, I ended up taking Engage. Because Stranglehold, I'm like, I am not shifting that many Terminators. Not with my AP yeah. 1 and 2. When you have 1 up and 0 up saves. Uh, so, I took Engage. Took Purify Ritual, because LOL. And then I took Rod, because, again, it's like, I want to take a secondary where I can do it irrespective of what my opponent's doing on the board you know as mm -hmm. long as i can get there it's a zach special yeah i like those i i hate taking secondaries that my opponents have a chance to interact with. yes like you can granted you can screen me out but mm -hmm. it's a lot yeah. harder than just a lot harder especially when your list is all terminators it's a little harder because you yeah. want to just move forward right but uh connor ended up taking stranglehold kind of expected aboard the witch again expected and Stubborn Defiance, which that is the Dark Angels one where they go LOL 15. I nominate <laughs> this objective that I'm going to protect and going to sit on here. And if I get it in my command phase, each command phase, it just goes up points. So I get like, it goes from like, from battle round two to five, it goes two, three points, five points, five points. It's, it's most of the time 15. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not in this case but we'll get to that um so essentially I, I looked at this he ended up deep striking like half his army which i was kind of like okay okay i i personally like when people do that because it gives me a chance to screen you out mm -hmm. a chance to like push you back forward um i spent a lot I, zach i had one movement phase 20 minutes my <laughs> my i end up going first and my mm. second movement phase to screen out his first turn deep strike 20 minutes zach <laughs> but i hey. I had it so precise, but I made one error. I left him a mm. little gap. It wasn't crazy, but it was a little gap in the middle where he was able to deploy <laughs> somewhat in the midboard. Mm -hmm. Not crazy. It was all over on the right hand side, kind of like um, parallel to the objective around that part of the that, that part of the board. Mm -hmm. But it sucked because I was like, "Damn it, I was so close." <laughs> but I looked at it. So what he did, this game kind of went. What I sh so here is what he did. He put the big unit with sword and board. 10 man with the minus one damage relic with the apothecary and one objective. He, that's where he deployed one. On the other side of the board on Dawn of War, he put five man Terminator, the Kapachi, Apache helicopter Terminators, the Cataphracti or whatever the fuck they are. <laughs> he had two units of them on that side of the board. And I kind of went, okay, he's going to pick this one with the million buffs to be a stubborn defiance. So I put all my dreadnoughts kind of towards that side of the board. Um, and kind of didn't really pay too much attention to, to the other side. First turn, I get first turn, I just scoot up a unit, get engaged, and my one mis first mistake is I, instead of, because I didn't shoot anything, because I know he can res and get extra movement, so I was smart, you know, I wasn't going to take chip shots just to let him get free movement. But what I should have done is I should have been, okay, you have your Kapachi, Apache, Helicopter, Dreadnoughts, or uh, Terminators on one side of the board. I should have took all my Dreadnoughts and went to that side of the board and just try to overwhelm him on that flank instead of being on the flank with all the sword and board, with the maces, with the damage three, like, Dreadnought killers. Mm -hmm. But it was okay because I have the Obsec, the guy with basically Grey Knight Rites of War, so he's got an aura of Obsec for core, core and character units. So I, I took him, I moved him up, I moved up the jump pack unit um, towards his Stubborn Defiance. Round two, I do the screen thing, I just kind of place on objectives, get my purifies, whatever. But what I do now, round two, so... he uh, So round two, he gets... Um, he just kind of shuffle His first turn, he just kind of shuffles, move forward, doesn't really do much. So my round two, I move towards his stubborn defiance or i had already done so but uh then what i do is i use the psychic power to move the uh interceptors onto his stubborn defiance and snag the stubborn defiance act with the rights of war because he only had five guys on there 
I obliterated the minus one damage guy with psychic powers because I, I used angles to make it him the closest with the psychic power and had the interceptors on the objective with obsec denied him stubborn defiance nice dude <laughs> that, i felt omega level brained that feels um, good that's another mistake though i made because i ended up to kill that minus one i had to kill the minus one damage guy because not only could he her heroic into the interceptors but he also made it so um that's basically it he, he could inter he could uh interrupt or um heroic into the interceptors and deny me my whole strategy um, so what I did is I smited with the interceptors first and then, um, did the, uh, grandmaster, the vortex of doom, which is just 2d3 mortals. Basically what I should have did is I should have started with him because when I did the 2d3 mortals second, I ended up doing like five and I one shot at him with that. It would have been enough. I should have rotted with those interceptors Yeah. because you can always, cause you can always do start rod and decide to break the rod. So you can say, I'm going to rod here. And end up casting a psychic power or shooting or charging because you can always break it but so i should have done that because then that would have given me more more rod which of which we'll get into ended up costing me the game then we just kind of go back and forth he ends up basically tabling me but it's a close game because i denied him that stubborn defiance and the game comes down to this i end up having one interceptor in combat with one of his uh characters and everything's just spread out. I have little, I have chunklets. I have like five models left, but I, we're tight on time. I just decided to fuck it. Just basically give up my turn, not really thinking. I lost it. I ended up not falling back with that character and that ended up giving up engage, which ended up losing me the game because this was a 79 to 80 loss. So, but very it was a really close. good, very close. It was a super good game, though. Connor was a fantastic opponent. This was my favorite game of the entire tournament. Nice. It was a super good game. I felt super big-brained, even though I lost. <laughs> uh, Connor had great plays with his movement, with his pylons, with his consolidates. Like he played a very good opponent. So, and we were both, you know, very great. It was no contentious moments or anything. So, yeah, good game. How did your round four go? Oh, it went well. It was another very close one. Yes. Um, I uh, went into uh, Drew Ward. He brought demons. Um, it's basically Mortarian, Bellicor, a uh, great unclean one, three plague burst crawlers, and then I think a couple troops, Junk like it. some horrors, and then like three units of furies for uh, Rod. Gotcha. Um, I took Rod and Engage, and then I took Bring It Down because literally everything in his list was like a Bring It Down point, pretty much. Yeah. Um, he took to the last rod, and I believe he took engage as well. Um, yeah. To the last were Bellicor, Mortarian, and the... Magnus. The, uh, or, yeah. Uh, no, Bellicor, Mortarian, and uh, the Great Unclean One. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, it, it was interesting. He rushed up real quick. Uh, he got first turn, so he started pushing, the, pushing up the board. Um... His great unclean one, he kind of got on one of the middle objectives. Bellacor came up to that middle objective. Uh, mo most of my stuff was outside of line of sight, turn one, so he couldn't do a lot of damage, but he was getting up on the board, and he was shooting his mortars off. Um, I, I came in, I uh, uh, double-moved my, my Termagants, Termagants, the big blob of 30, try and keep him off of stuff and take both of the middle objectives back. Um... I was able to move block Mortarian, even though he flies. You do the trick where you measure from the back of the base. Yes. And I can put things there so while he can still move forward, he's moving like six, six inches yeah. instead of 12. Six so I can keep him, yeah. Yeah. So I, I can keep him, uh, keep him away from my more important stuff. He's, he's going to kill some gaunts, but... Yeah, nothing that you yeah. want. Nothing he wants to kill. Yeah, my, in this list, everything's pretty much T8, so my devourers aren't really doing anything Useless. at this point. Yeah. The termagants become roadblocks. Yep. That's that's all they do in this game. Yeah, smart, <laughs> nice. But yeah, the termagants were able to uh, move block and keep control of the middle for a while. A couple turns. Uh, yeah. I kept casting the uh, five up feel no pain on the termagants. Ah, so, just annoying right? little so, like, it, it was actually kind of hard to chew through them. Yeah, um, he's got a lot of valuable shots, but not mm -hmm. a lot of like fuck like horde killing. Right. 
I, uh, I ran across the board, uh, I was able to kill a Plague Burst Crawler and then flip one of his home objectives, again with my Gene Stealers. Mm. I really like Gene Stealers. Oh man, oh. I love that Gene Stealers are good now. Right, like, they're, they're suitably scary right? again. Right, like, I, I still think they should be glass cannons, mm -hmm. but it's nice that they just obliterate, they can obliterate a Plague Burst Crawler. Yeah, they can I, obliterate dread knights they can obliterate whatever they're spicy i mean you give them four rerolls to hit yep. sixes to hit explode into oh. two additional hits yes so you you actually any dice that aren't sixes you re-roll because you're fishing for sixes yep. they're that good oh. uh and then sixes to hit auto wound because of the uh tyranid prime so even on t8 things mm -hmm. i'm getting like 20 wounds in oh my and just that weight of dice means just... that I'm pretty much taking whatever they get into as long as it's not, like, Mortarian. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Granted, like, Granted. they have limits. They have they, limits. They can take down BBCs, which is all you need them to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but so they, they were able to flip one of his objectives, gave him a five on primary for the first, or turn two. Um, uh, I eventually took down the, uh, the great unclean one, um... I think that was really like the only ah. bring it down I got. I yeah. that was that was a rough one. Uh, bring it down did not work super well. Well, I got a bunch of bring it down, but that was the only two the last that I denied him. Yeah, I, I still big say. though, still big. Still fifteen big. to ten is a big swing. Yeah, it, it was it was good, but yeah. um, from there I my unit I had a unit of like fifteen uh, hormigons. They ran up, and they tied up his other two Plague Burst Crawlers for a lot <laughs> of the game. Not only that, but people always forget Hormigants have a 6-inch pile sure and consolidate. Do. So I was able to pile in and consolidate into his like both Plague Burst Crawlers and flip his other home objective Ooh. for the later turns. So I was only giving him like 5s, maybe 10s on primaries for most That's of the game. That's huge. Um... It ended up coming down to uh, 74 in my favor to his 72. Another a two close point ass game. game. You son of a bitch. Right? I barely snagged that one. It, it came down to uh, I had last turn. Like, I, I had. Uh, I went second. So I got to score my primaries at the end of my last turn. Mm, love and a, that. a single lone surviving termagant oh. got onto the objective with a plague burst crawler oh. flipped it <laughs> and gave me just enough to win by two wow thank wow. god for fearless termagants synapse isn't so bad is it <laughs> not so bad it seems kind of shitty and then you're like wait fearless is actually pretty good this is nice Fear like straight fearless <laughs> that's good it's actually really good so that's awesome. Very close game. Did you, I like how'd it. you feel after that? Very Using good. Some I, I was excited. I was really happy with that win. It was close. I honestly wasn't sure I was going to win that one. Yeah. And that lone termigan is the literally little, what won me the game. One little boy. I if, hope you. I hope you know which one that is. I, I wish I did. Oh, uh, you son <laughs> of a bitch. I should have like you gave him a little bit of like markings on his carapace guy. or something. Even just yeah. on the bottom of the base, just to give him one little good boy. That treatment. was Jeff or something. Yeah, that was Frank. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was, that was a close game. Uh, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, how, uh, how did your round five go? Uh, round five was, uh, against sisters. I played Melody. Um, she was a good opponent. Um, uh, this one was kind of quick, unfortunately. It was Stranglehold. I took Stranglehold, Direct Assault, Purify, Sweep and Clear. Pretty basic. Uh, hmm. she took Stranglehold, Direct Assault, into the last. I, her... Units, you know, she's playing the John Lennon list, so her to the last was Morvan Vall, Celestine, and Sacrosense. And I made sure to um, tell her, like, hey, I can, you know, I, I try to not play Gotcha Hammer, so I try to tell you I can redeploy, I can do all of this. But turn one, this was super hard for me. I was like, do I tell her that it, um, that I can uh, redeploy? Because mm -hmm. I, I saw that she had left a pretty significant gap in her backfield mm -hmm. and i went no jasper we're at a tournament <laughs> I, I know right. so i took advantage of it full advantage i put the guy over there that when you get shot he can redeploy mm -hmm. i put him over there and i went sacrosense i'm sorry but you're done <laughs> obliterated the sacrosense first turn took five points to the last and from there zach it was kind of like i've kind of won because yeah. i'm getting my stranglehold i'm getting my direct assault every turn pretty much every nice. turn i'm getting my purify so that game was back and forth. She played well. She fought hard, but that was a pretty 
tough thing to come back from. Ended up winning that one, eighty-seven to sixty-five. Oh, nice. Not yeah, bad. felt pretty good. Four and one. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, yeah, my, uh, my round five, uh, of course, I took direct and stranglehold. Have to. Um, and my, my customary rod every time. Ooh, the big rod. I'm really not looking forward to the update to rod. Lictors are rod. dead again. Oh, but yes. But, the goodest boy. Um, he had them for like a year. Yeah, they, they were auto takes for a year. It was nice. Uh, but, uh, I went into, uh, Sarah Timmons and her Black Templar. Um... I had very little experience into Black Templar. Uh, admittedly, I sh- I should have um, I should have done a little research while uh, while I was getting ready for that game, um, but uh, I did not. I, I kind of underestimated how resilient black templars terminators were god they're so resilient uh, they're not so t- i didn't know either honestly not only that but you know what before the game started she goes you know if i let your hive guard shoot for more than a turn i'm doing something wrong and i went you're playing space marines you don't have anything fast yeah well, I underestimated the speed of Black Templars. <laughs> <Got it>. Oh, <laughs> and because uh, uh, she can move, she probably took the Abhor the Witch, so she can move an extra yeah. three inches yep. the first battle round. Exactly. Ooh. Yeah. So everything was moving an extra three inches. Oh uh, God. The fuck. The fucking Blade Guard veterans made it across the board and got into combat with my Hive Guard turn two. <laughs> yeah, um, she was not that kidding. hurt. She no, was not, not kidding. I not fucking around. grossly underestimated the speed of Black Templars turn one. Played again those those hive guard go back, back corner. Back or in, corner. Yeah, back corner, and I'm bubble wrapping everything. Like yep. that was insane. Uh, I I made the mistake of with player place terrain. I put a ruin right up on the edge of my deployment, so it was even like outside my deployment a little bit because oh. it's the corners. Yeah, so it's kind of right up. So when I deployed, I was right on the edge, so I could start getting. Uh, uh, direct assault and everything. Um, well, like I said, I underestimated the durability of uh, Black Temple like Terminators. She took direct strangle uh, and oath of moment. So by holding the middle, <laughs> just win the game yeah. kind of a scenario. Yeah, this, that's the Black... I call this yeah. the Black Templar special. This yeah. is their favorite mission. Well, she got first turn, oh. got on that objective, oh, no. almost got to the Hive Guard turn oh. one. I uh, countercharged with my gene stealers, and granted, I took out a majority of those terminators just with stealers, mm-hmm. and flipped the objective, so I got my strangle and direct. You feel um, okay? I'm feeling all right by then. Uh, but then they just keep punching back, yeah, then they, like then they revive, start reviving. Yeah. yeah, it starts getting real tough to it's take hairy. them out. Turn two, she got into combat with my hive guard, Oof. which really neuters my list. Ouchies. The gene stealers are all but dead now. Now we start getting the uh, the redemptors and whatnot. Yeah, and they're taking away all the griblies. You're damn right they are. Swarmy, I kept giving Swarm Lord obsec, and he was sitting on that middle objective for like a solid three turns. Hell yeah. Um, that actually kept me in the game for a little while. Uh, really, I, I just ran out of steam, and those Terminators would not die. I put yeah. so much resources into those Termies. Oh, it, uh, it came down to, uh, in her favor, 98 to 70. That one, yeah. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. Out of out of a hundred, she missed two whole points. <sighs> well played, well, well fought, well played, yeah. Sarah. Uh, yeah, now Sarah Timmons yeah, well, with the Black Templar. That well played. That, oh, well I, uh, played. Goddamn, that's got rough. quite the lesson. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, I think you disrespect Space Marines a little too much. You know, yep. as the Imperium player, mainly <laughs> you disrespect the Imperium a little bit, and they give bit. you they give you a little. Clap. I'm I'm the uh, the resident Xenos player. All my factions are Xenos, and yep. I I start to feel like oh well I know how to play into Space Marines. Yeah. Oh, these are slow little oh, manlets. They're they're Space Marines. Yeah. I know how to beat those, and then all of a sudden they come with a new Space Marine supplement, and it's yep. like oh they have this gimmick. Like, That's a little different. Okay. Should have read this book. Should have read that book. Should have. <laughs> Yeah, I will not. Uh, I will do my best not to underestimate power armor ever yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, you'll never make that mistake again. No, uh, just because it's Until power custodes. armor. Yeah, you're gonna disrespect custodians. I'll bring them and I'll clap you. We'll see what happens. We'll see <laughs> what happens. <laughs> so heading into the last round, uh, this is kind of blowout city for both of us. Not gonna lie. 
Um, yeah. I ended up playing... It was over on another hole two, hole three, Dawn of War, six objectives. Um, played Oliver Smith, great player, great person, great mm-hmm. to talk to. Um, he was playing his, good. He's playing his White Scars, which he's pretty known for. He's won GTs with it, top aided with them. Wow. Yeah, very good player. Um, so I ended up taking Engage, Rod, and Purify. I was like, ah, I don't want to take Stranglehold. I don't want to have to rely on shooting him off anything. That seems sketchy. Rod, same thing. Just want to Rod. Purify, I want to Purify. He took Engage, Banners, and a Pour. So kind of <laughs> makes sense. Uh, he had, you know, his White Scars are like a bunch of Vanguard veterans, some Contemptor Dreadnoughts with Plasma and Volkites and... Uh, the grab shit which can you know the rhino can move then they can disembark after it moves oh, yeah. so it's like fast moving he had me schizo scared with his drop pod <laughs> with his grabs so my, i think my mistake was i came out to play first turn because i went first and tried to shoot the rhino couldn't even end up killing the rhino but um i think my mistake was exposing myself and not using player place enough to hide the objectives mm-hmm. I wanted an open field because I was under the assumption, like, oh, even though he's got Grav and Contemptors, I, it's my shooting gallery. Mm-hmm. I was scared of the the Vanguard veterans, which I should have been. Mm-hmm. But I think had I been able to play a little bit more cat and mouse, hid a little bit better with the um, player plays terrain, made, made, would have made it a little more interesting. He would have came after me, but um, I can kill Vanguard veterans pretty good in combat, actually. Yeah. You know, with rerolls, I'm damaged too, so I don't know. Uh, he obviously played really good, really good player. Um, but basically, after turn two, he had flipped one of my objectives on the hole two, hole three, so I didn't get any primary. And I was like, mm-hmm. I looked at him, I was like, well, time to play for points because I'm not winning this. And he's like, yeah, that's a good idea. So, mm-hmm. you know, I ended up just playing for points. Um, obviously, he was just playing to try and max because he's trying to score really high. But uh, ended up scoring 70 to his 96. But yeah. great game, great opponent. Uh, he's awesome to play. Oh, man. Yeah, my round six. Not a strong finish here. I went up against uh, Jack Essif uh, and his Free Buddha's Orcs. What club is Jack from, Zach? Oh, he's from Frozen North. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Yeah, You're they... Dreaded. They destroy us. Talented players. Talented Very players. Good. They demolish us. I need more games into people from Frozen North, man. I, I also do. I, <laughs> I really want to play do. against some of those players. They right. are, they're quite talented. Uh, bring in free Buddha's orcs. Just, uh, I... I'll just say this, Zach. That's just hard counter. That's all. Enough said. Close it, the book. It hurt. Close yeah. the book. It's Call done. it done. I rolled up to that table. <laughs> it's like you I lost. saw free Buddha's. It was... Uh, not great um well originally i thought i was going into knights i think it was or yeah sisters. We, we did repair yeah, yeah and I, I actually i was con- confident in what i was going into and then it was a repair we had a, a drop or something um ended up going into free buddha's orcs luckily i rolled up first turn on this one then you can play a little bit right it gave me a chance to to do something before i was picked up Yep. Um, I did take down, I think I took down a plane and, uh, oh, a couple vehicles right away, a couple of the buggies. Um, I know I got my gene sealers in turn one. Nice. Uh, the hive guard dropped a plane on their own, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, after taking out a plane and a couple of buggies, there's just so much shit left on the board yeah, and so much that kills all of so them, much yeah. he was just rolling so many dice yeah, like you just can't deal with it turn one i killed some stuff turn two i i managed to kind of block off the middle of the board okay uh the way terrain was set up i got hormigons in and basically kept him from moving on to like the bottom left hand side of the board uh from my perspective it was donna war yeah um and so he could only kind of stay in the top right half um I should say I took Rod, bring it down, engage. Uh, he took the stomp one, basically where it's like uh, grind them down, grind them down, but in combat, yeah. uh, where he's got to kill more in combat than I do. Uh, and then I believe he took engage or uh, assassinate, I believe. Uh, so he was trying to kill my characters and whatnot. Uh, by the end of this, I, I rolled up to free Buddha's orcs, and I yep. was not confident. I was tired at the last round of the second day. Yeah, it's a grind. It was, it was, it was a little rough. Give me um, that score, Zach. Give it to but, me. But, yeah, it's, it came down 97 in his favor to 44. Ooh. By turn two, I, I chipped it's, a little more, and his turn two, by then he had killed the Gribbly's uh, move blocking. He had moved all of his shit across the board to my side. 
he picked up like 85 percent of my army just in that turn two it was insane. It was fair and balanced. Fair and balanced free bootin' orcs. Uh, hate to see it. Hate to see it. It was rough. I that was my first taste of free bootas. Yeah, hopefully your last. Hopefully my last. Yes. <laughs> Even with the Maybe. the buggy nerf. Yep. It's still like they still just have so much. Especially in your kind of list. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of griblies, few monsters. Yeah. It was like oof. Ooh. All of his like strength five and stuff. Make Zaki a dull boy. Oh yeah. That, that one hurt. And then I didn't have anything for strength eight, so all of his ramshackle oh, was yeah, kicking just in. Devoured you. It was rough. It was yeah. like trying to wound everything with transhuman. Like, yeah, good luck. Good luck. Whew. Yeah. But uh, yeah, finished uh, four and two. Felt pretty good. Yeah. I hit my three and three. I hit my three and three. I was just outside of top ten. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. yeah well, it's, um, but it felt pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. I was like, top 11? Okay, I wouldn't have pegged that for the right? going That's in. Awesome, so I was though. like, that, yeah, so whatever. I feel fine with that. Oh, yeah. There's some tough opponents, some stiff yeah. competition. Right? So mm-hmm. yeah, wrapping this up, I'm uh, just going to, you know, we're hoping to go to Wisconsin GT, but uh, it's a little cloudy. We don't know if we're going to be able to get in. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we don't. I don't have any big tournaments we're going to in the future. But Keeping our eye open, though. Keeping our eye open, hoping up, looking for the Eldar. You know, I am an Imperium player, but god damn, do I like my elves. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, new Eldar, man. Ooh, I, I've i been playing be my bugs, but I really, I am an Eldar player. I'm a diehard Harlequin fan, specifically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a big fan of Craft Worlds and Drakari. Yes. I have been waiting to go heavily into Craft Worlds yep. for a bit of a line update. Yeah, and they, oh, oh, I mean, with all this stuff coming out. Yes. Craft World, my first Oof. love. Played them since I was like 10, mm-hmm. but uh, I will say the resin models are just atrocious. Yeah. I can, you know, they're my favorite army, but mm, ah, that resin, <laughs> it's hard to love. That's yeah. an ugly thing to love. Anything's in fine cast, it's fine like... trash. It's God, it's rough. But yeah, I don't know. Um, right now I'm enjoying Sisters. I'm mm-hmm. playing a Stephen Box style Bloody Rose li- or uh, Bloody, Lo- yeah. Bloody Rose uh, <laughs> Armored Lady list. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it heavily. Uh, just kind of waiting for the new chapter approved missions. I'm very excited mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with Crusher Stampede. Yeah, you've been crushing. You've been oh, stampeding. I've been crushing and stampeding. Yeah, that uh, four up, five up, feel no pain, transhuman. Yep. You uh, give you give a Dima a four up invuln five up feel no pain transhuman, like that thing is not hard or is is not easy to bring down. I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, you just bring some French fries unsalted, I'll salt them for you as you found out yesterday. <laughs> God damn, it's salty shooting that thing. Fucking I mean, hey. well, I mean, you you shot at the one and then the other one you put like thirty sacrosancts into. It didn't. Yep. And it it was still alive to punch back. Yeah, the you know that one I was like ah. But the one I re- nine melt I went nine wounds through with the melta, Zach made all the four ups. The first time through, he made <laughs> oh, all, all yeah, of that them. That was insane. Or uh, I think another time you. you got like six damage through. I reduced it to five and then rolled three five up. Yeah, and it's just like, like two like, damage is like you know it's not that far oh, off from average, but God, it feels bad. It's rough, especially it's when rough. you're not expecting. It. It's like oh yeah, it's tough, and then you do that, it's like ah, this is really tough. What about Tau? Tower coming out? Yeah, Tower. I'm trash. so excited. There, I I haven't played my Tau much since like the beginning of Eighth Edition because they just haven't been fun to pilot. And they're not cool. They had that uh, that no. book that was written by a guard player yeah. supposedly, and it just it showed. It'll be cool when the anime bots are back. Yeah, I miss my my anime bots. I want to play. I want to play my Gundams. Yeah, <laughs> they're so cool. Tau are really cool. Mm, I mean, if you're fun. not playing like Crisis Suits, Ghost Kills, mm-hmm. Riptides, are you doing Tau right? Yeah. But I will say uh, the best thing about the tower, uh, tower getting two wounds before Chaos Space Marines. Did you see shield drones two have two wound wounds? Two shield drones have... before Chaos Marines <laughs> even have two Why wounds. Why does a shield drone have two wounds, Zach? Um, it... They might take away the feel no pain. They Regardless, might take away... Why? I don't know. I have Why? no idea. Why? I really don't. Why? It has as much... It as... has as many wounds as a intercessor. In please, what world? GW, don't make me take 40 shield yeah, drones again. Uh, for please, the love of God. Please, please God. See I won't. I won't. I won't do it. No, I refuse to do it. I was going to do it. <laughs> and then COVID. <laughs> and 
Yeah. I had that list ready to rock, and then I got COVIDed. Oh, yeah, you had like two commanders, three riptides, yep. and shield drones. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, it was actually pretty fun. It was actually pretty fun. It's a cool list. It's, it's cool. It's Very a technical. little cancerous. <laughs> it, it's, it's not uh, for the faint of heart, not going to lie. Yeah. But, it's, uh, uh, and hammerheads. I want my rail guns to be good again. Right. For like all of 8th edition, it was the Ion Cannon. And now rail guns, like the iconic Tau gun. We got some people tweaking about rail guns, but we'll see. I mean, it's one like shot, you know. Single shot on a relatively, what has historically been a weak hammerhead chassis. I, you know, I don't want to downplay it because it, it's strong. It's very yeah. strong. It's going to one shot dreadnoughts. It's going to make people mm-hmm. cry. But um, <laughs> it's if you play MSU like me, it no gives a fuck. Mm. But, like, I, I will say, playing with a hammerhead is like playing with a 5-inch by 6-inch brick that is hard to hide. <laughs> yeah, player plays, bitch. <laughs> you know what? But you know what? I get player one plays, turn bitch. of shooting with my hammerheads, and then you get to shoot them. With what? <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> hey, you probably still have two or three more Dread Knights left. <laughs> nah, that's true. That's, well, not by then, because they'll be nerfed. Papa oh, GW man. is coming in. Coming in hard. As they probably yeah. should. Five is aggressive. Five's aggressive. Five's aggressive. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what our plans are. Hopefully we can do this every week. Be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is goal. the end of the first podcast. Just trying to get our fucking our little fingertips. Just dip, s- the, dip the toe in the water. and uh, <laughs> Just one toe. Hopefully just keep pumping these bad boys out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is our, uh, like, our... our what is it? Our, ver- our maiden voyage. Yes, yeah, maiden voyage. Maiden I mean, voyage. <laughs> Who's listening to this right now? I mean, this is just a maiden voyage. This this will be the episode that our diehard fans in a few months lo- like go back yes. in our history and like listen to, and they're like, "Yeah, this is the origin story." Yeah. Oh, oh my god, this is the <laughs> wow, right? Love yeah. It. So we'll see. It. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, good talking with you, and uh, absolutely hope to see you guys next week, next Wednesday. Let's go. Yeah. Take care. Happy gaming. Happy gaming.